Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to my talk, Scale Your Data, Not Your Process. Welcome to the Blaze ecosystem. Um, so a brief introduction. I'm a data scientist at Continuum Analytics. We have a booth out there, so if any time during the week you want to come talk to me, I'll be there most of the time. I'm from Barcelona, uh, but I'm currently living in Austin, Texas. Um, so also, if you're from Spain, you can talk to me in Spanish, Catalan. Uh, if you're not, you can also talk to me in English or German. Uh, this is my website. I have a couple of the talks I've given at other Python conferences. You can also check them out. Um, just a little bit, a brief thing about um, Continuum Analytics. Uh, Guido mentioned the company uh, in his keynote today. Uh, we offer a free Python distribution called Anaconda. Uh, it's very popular in the SciPy community for uh, libraries that have C and Fortran bindings. It makes it very easy to install them. Um, we are uh, very uh, integrated in the open source community. We, have, we sponsor several projects, um, Conda, Blaze, Das, Bokeh, Numba. And we're a proud sponsor of a lot of Python conferences. Um, EuroPython, PyCon, SciPy, PyData, and we're also hiring, so we're going to be tomorrow at, at the hiring event. Uh, if anyone is interested, also come talk to us at the booth. That's our website. A little bit about this talk. Um, is, I'm going to be organizing it in five, uh, in three different areas. Uh, first, a little bit about what, what data science is and what the stack that I'm presenting today brings to the data science um, uh, community. Um, then a little bit of what I call the data science tripers, and we'll hear a little bit about that later. And then inside the Blaze ecosystem, there are many projects, and I'm going to be mainly talking about four. Blaze, Data Shape, Odin, Dask, and how the, each one relates to each other. Um, you can follow the slides online uh, if for some reason uh, you're not able to see it from back there. Um, there's also a GitHub repository where I have the um, guide and readme for uh, reproducing the examples that I'm going to show in my slides. Um, so you can also try that. So first area, five areas of data science. So many people have their own definition of what data science means. Um, for me, data science is more just than just machine learning and stats. Actually, data science is just a rebranding of five fields coming together to solve data problems. Um, a lot of people in the scientific community, community have already been um, solving large, large scale analytic problems. Um, sci scientists deal with large amounts of data, um, so they have already worked with it. Um, then there's this group of machine learning and stats people, um, the analytics community with the databases and queries. Um, web is where we find a lot of the data nowadays. And then there's the distributed systems um, community with all the Hadoop and Spark uh, that are trying to scale those problems too. If we um, try to find what personas are working in each of the different fields, there's some terms, right? There are people calling data scientists, people that are in the machine learning stats, um, that are actually most, more concerned on modeling. We have people in the data business analysts, uh, web developers, um, and in the distributed systems, a lot of architects, data engineers. And then in, in the scientific computing, all uh, the research and com um, computational scientists. If we have to find one word um, of what each of these personas cares about, maybe these ones are a proposal of words that uh, identify them. Um, so machine learning, people in stats care about models, about finding the right models to solve their problems. People in the analytics community are mainly uh, concerned with reporting, right? Building rather the reports, the metrics. In the web development, building an application uh, in, in terms of relation with data science, applications that portray accurately the, your data problem. In the distributed systems, you're concerned in your pipeline, your architecture that you're building. And in the scientific computing world, in the algorithms. So if we use more than one word, what's the vocabulary of those people in those areas? We see data scientists um, use words like model, supervised, unsupervised, clustering, dimensionality reduction, uh, cross-validation. In the analytics world, people concerned with joining with databases, with um, finding, uh, filtering, getting summary statistics. In the web, uh, we have scraping and crawling to gather data, um, gather information, uh, things like interactive data visualizations. In the distributed, distributed systems, um, we have all the Hadoop Spark ecosystem, um, working about clusters, uh, stream processing, etc. 
In the scientific computing, people are concerned with GPUs, with graphs, with um, algorithms, with compute, computation power. Um, what are the tools that each of these personas and fields are working with? So in the machine learning, you find, we find R, Theano, Scikit-Learn. In the analytics community, all the databases, SQL, all community, uh, people working with Excel too. In the web community, we have all the web frameworks. Uh, we have uh, these three. We have uh, Bokeh for interactive visualizations. Uh, we have scrapers. Uh, we have a way to share our code with um, Jupyter notebooks. In the distributed systems, as I mentioned, we have Spark, we have Hadoop, we have Luigi, we have Kafka, we have all these uh, also tools being built around it. In the scientific computing, we have um, the core of a lot of the uh, a lot of the libraries that are used by the machine learning and stats um, um, library, like NumPy, SciPy, X-Ray, PyTables, um, Cython, uh, Numba, etc. So this is to provide a general picture of what the data, the status of the data science ecosystem is right now. So if we take a look at those tools, what, what are the three edges that they're bringing together? There's three things. There's data, there's the computational engine behind it, and that there's the expression. Expression is how you ask, what are you asking for? So data is all about metadata of information on that data and how you store it and containers, containers meaning um, the, how the data is stored in either your memory or your disk. Um, we then have um, engine, that's the computation power, what, what gets executed. And then we have expression, meaning the API, the syntax, the language, how, how rich is that to allow you to express what you want to compute. So what are we looking for in each of these edges? Um, in metadata, we're, we're looking for semantics. Um, in, in storage and contain, containers, um, compression and accessibility to your data. In uh, engine, we're, we're looking for performance, being able to do that as fast as possible. And in expressions, we want, want simplicity. We want to be able to express what we want to do in a language that's, um, that's very close to our human language. So just to like have a, an example, what do all those things mean uh, in, in other languages. Um, for example, we have different um, file formats, right? HDF5, H, um, uh, NetCDF, JSON, CSV, uh, SQLite, vCalls, uh, but we also have uh, memory um, containers like pandas data frames or NumPy arrays. Um, in terms of semantics, uh, we have a lot of, like, we have types, we have fields, we have names, we have description of your data, we have relationships between the fields of your data. In terms of computation, we have um, different, different computation engines that perform those, like Spark, like uh, Cython, Fortran, uh, Python itself, or the libraries that are built on top of it. In, in terms of the API syntax language, I'm talking about the API, uh, the NumPy API, the Pandas MPI, the bindings that we have to other libraries that allows us to express that in an easy way. We also have m many of the SQL dialects, et cetera. So in the core, all those libraries, NumPy, Pandas, databases, and Spark have, have somehow each of those th um, three edges in this triangle. Um, let's, let's put a, a simple example. Imagine NumPy. So NumPy, we have NumPy D types, right? That allows us to express the types of the fields in our, in our data. We also have a way to contain uh, the, the data uh, for NumPy with NumPy and the arrays. Um, but NumPy itself uh, needs to compute things, needs to compute what the, the user is asking for. And, and it has you know, bindings to C and Fortran, um, also Python. And in terms of the API, uh, we have a, a NumPy MPI, right? That's how do you express what you want? How do you express the, the fact that you want to create a, a NumPy array? So in all of these systems, they're happy and like, um, you know, sad faces. Um, NumPy and Pandas mainly are limited by, by the memory of your, um, your laptop or um, your, your, your device. Um, but people, scientists, like to express their things with arrays. It's an API that has attracted a lot of attention in the scientific community. Uh, 
Data scientists, analysts also really like the Pandas API, the fact that they can deal with data frames, tabular manner. Um, in the database uh, world, while we have a lot of um, dialects, uh, SQL, there's a lot of overhead to set up. Um, and kind of the Spark world, yes, it has come to like um, expand the Hadoop ecosystem to more of the uh, di data scientists and people that are further away of the engineering um, side. But it hasn't quite yet um, bridged the gap to help you in all the cases of your data. In smaller uh, sets, you still have a lot of overhead to uh, be, um, perform it. So let's take a look at what the Blaze ecosystem brings to, to this ecosystem that I've just mentioned. So Blaze started out as how do we expand NumPy and Pandas to, to the to out of core computing, to not be limited just by the RAM that your laptop has. And from there, there's several spin-off projects that have come uh, along the way with things that we've learned. So first, we needed to expand some of the NumPy and Pandas limitations of expressing uh, the metadata that's, that's in them. And that's what, where DataShape um, came to play. That's a, a data description language that's more general than what NumPy and Pandas implemented. Um, then we, we had um, Dyn, which is a dynamic multidimensional array, which is a library written in C and that has Python bindings. Um, we also found that there was a lot of need to move data around. People, data scientists were working with different fo file formats and uh, there, there wasn't always an easy way to move from one format to another one or from one place to the other one. So that's where Odo um, was a spin-off project that came out of the Blaze um, uh, repository. Um, we then have Numba, which is a code optimization, a just-in-time compiler. Inside Blaze, we have what we call Blaze as a, as a project, which has been kind of the core, which is an, an, just an interface to query data in different backends. We have Dask that allows us to do um, easy parallel computing. Um, Castro, that's a column store on this column store partitioned. Um, and B calls, also uh, uh, column store and, and also uh, query language um, that allows us to, uh, to um, get data out of it. So if we, if we place all these projects in this table that we had before, uh, here kind of is where it comes from now. Um, data shape is this met metadata extraction of expressing your data in different formats. Um, we have Dyn, which stores data in a multidimensional array. Uh, we have Odo that allows us to switch from one uh, container to another container, from one from NumPy arrays to pandas uh, to a lot of the backends that Blaze uses. Um, we have Numba that allows us to optimize the code, um, Dask for parallel computing, uh, and Blaze being this common interface that allows us to query everything in a unified uh, unified manner without having to learn each of the different APIs. So if we put those um, packages in our triangle, uh, we find data shape as the metadata uh, in the metadata section. Uh, we have Castra in the storage uh, as a, one of those um, containers. Odo that will allows us to switch from one to the other one. We have um, on the engine computational the, the power of parallelizing with Dask and to optimizing the code with Numba and expressing everything with Blaze. And then Dyn and Bcalls, which also are uh, part um, data containers and also uh, have computation power to uh, resolve your, your whatever you want need to compute. If we now place those projects, I'm kind of giving you the overall um, picture of what, where they all fit. Um, so a lot of the analytics people are, you know, interested in tabular data formats like um, uh, like pandas data frames. So that data frame is there for them. Um, Blaze as the unified query interface. Uh, we have Odo that can be used mainly for everyone. It's just like a utility function to move uh, data around. We have a big uh, support in like the scientific computing world, uh, and we're solving a lot of those underlying problems that then are used by many of the libraries in the Python ecosystem for machine learning and stats. But we're kind of bringing like the, solving the, the underlying problems. And then we are also engaging with the 
DAS, with a distributed system world with what's called DAS distributed. And then we're also gonna see Blaze Server, which allows us to serve um, all this data in different formats through a unified API. So kind of like the ideal Blaze was uh, this connector to all these different um, fields in the data science community and bringing everything um, in a unified manner. Um, so if we just remove um, some of the rest and just gonna focus off on what we're gonna um, talk about in this talk, we're mainly gonna be talking about four of our projects, Autoblaze, Dask, and Datashape. And here's just where they, each of them are. So the first one's gonna be Blaze. Blaze is just an interface to create data on different storage systems. So from Blaze, you import data, and the same way um, you load data the same way um, that you do with the CSV, SQL databases, MongoDB, JSON, S3, um, Hive, whatever there is. You just call data and pass this uh, URI, and then you can do all these queries with all those different backends. Select columns, filter, operate, reduce, uh, do uh, split by combine operations like group by and things like this. Um, add new columns, relabel columns, do text matching. One of the features that we've just added to Blaze is the, to the Blaze server is this way of um, building a, unif uh, a uniform interface that allows you to host data in all of these backends through a JSON web API that uh, it's the same for all those databases. Um, so you, you can write your YAML file specifying um, all the data that you wanna serve, where they're, where they're located. Um, you can also pass the, what we're gonna see next as data shape. And you spin up the Blaze server with all of them there. And you have a, uh, an endpoint that allows you to perform all the computations that we've just mentioned before uh, through the API. So this will look like something like this. With, um, we have the data available through the API and then we can query, we can get the fields and we can get all the different uh, um, data sets and inside each of the data sets we can also get, uh, we can compute the same queries that I've just mentioned. So uh, as you see, we can, you can just use things like curl. Uh, we have a, a, an expressive language, um, compute something and, uh, and return it. Uh, there's also the option to use the Blaze server to tree and just like re something like request, but I'm gonna need to explain data shape first. So data shape is just a way to, uh, to describe structured data. And um, there's the, the uh, URL to the docs, and it's basically, basically um, what's called unit types. And unit types is just a dimension and a D type. Uh, and that's what forms a data shape. Then we also can combine those in what's called an order structured D-type, which is a record. Um, and then that record is a very extensible language. Uh, so even if it's, um, you, we can use it and actually Blaze uses it as a, uh, to express tabular, uh, tabular data formats, you can actually combine it to have more of like unstructured or semi-structured um, data and, and express it nested fields and things like that. Um, so for example, that var um, x, y, z is gonna be our, our fields. Um, var is gonna be the length of our, our table, which can be known or unknown. Um, and then the types of those, of those um, fields. So in our previous case, where we had the several IDIS data sets in different formats, uh, we can get the data shape, it will look something like that. We have a database, inside the database we have a table. The table has this um, data shape um, with the, the different uh, fields and uh, types, and the same for all of them. So what's the connection between Blaze query uh, mechanism and data shape? Well, Blaze uses data shape as its type system. So when we, uh, imp when we call data iris.json, we have access to the data shape and we can explore it. Um, so now that we can go back to the Blaze server and see, okay, um, if I know the, the, the data shape of my, uh, of my whatever I've put in the Blaze server, which I can get because uh, we just saw that I can just do this shape and I'll get the data shape of that, um, I can then express my query and 
just use request to query that, and the return is going to be a JSON with the uh, with whatever I ask the computation to do. It's going to return the data, and it's going to return the data shape and the name of the the field. So, auto. Auto is data migration, which is like a um, CP with types for data. Um, so it has a very simple API from auto import auto, and I just have to put class uh, my source and target. So if I want to um, get a uh, JSON from a CSV file, just do auto uh, iris CSV, iris JSON, and that's going to create the JSON for me. And that's a pretty simple case, but you, you know it can get more complex. Um, like putting things to MongoDB or HDFS or moving things from one hive um, CSV to Porket, things like that. So how does Auto does that under the hood? It's just a network of different formats and conversions. So if I want to go from X to Y, the most efficient way, Auto computes that and, and executes that to you and returns the final container that's your target. So imagine you wanted to put something that you have in S3 to Postgres. Um, You'll have to go maybe to do uh, get photo, get the file, uh, read, uh, turn it into CSV, put it to Postgres. Auto just simplifies that by um, just having this, um, you know, this URI um, where you can um, specify your S3 wherever it, it, it lives and your Postgres um, database. Um, Blaze depends on Auto because it uses this, it to handle the URIs. So the same URIs that are valid for Blaze are also the ones valid for Odo. Dask. We've mentioned Dask enables parallel computing. Um, so in, the, in data science, we have different sizes of data, right? We have things that are around a gigabyte that can fit in memory, can fit in your laptop. Um, and the, but then we move to the scale of terabytes, right? And that does not fit in your memory, but can fit on your disk. And you still want to compute um, be able to compute that because it does fit in your, your laptop. Why couldn't you just compute it with it? Um, and then we have things that are in the petabyte scale where it fits in many disks. So in single, with single core computing, we can compute things that are in the gigabyte scale. With parallel computing, um, if we use shared memory, we, we can compute things that fit in disk. If you use a distributed cluster, we can compute things that fit in many disks. So NumPy pandas have solved the single core computing and DAS is bringing the parallel computation power to the users of NumPy and Pandas. So we have um, the shared memory and DAS distributed for the distributed cluster. And inside of shared memory, we have two ways of scheduling, uh, multi-threading and multi-processing. So what would DAS look for an end user? So we have um, NumPy that lo looks like um, your image in um, the left. Um, so we create a, a NumPy array of ones uh, and we return some kind of computation, we return it. So Dask does lazy evaluation, so you have to call compute on it to get uh, your return, to return it. And you also have to specify the chunk size of the arrays, how you want to partition that. You have more information on the documentation page of what are like good numbers uh, in terms of, um, you know, areas of the megabyte size of arrays that you should uh, target to. So in this case, there's those, those two changes. You need to specify the chunks. You need to call compute to actually perform the computation. And then you have two, two output results, right? Your output can fit in memory, so you can just call a NumPy array and keep treating it like that. Or if your re result doesn't fit in memory, you can actually store it to disk with an HDF5 file. If you're more of a pandas user, that data frame looks a lot like a, a pandas data frame, but it allows to compute things that don't fit in memory. That's like the big change without you having to change much of the, the flow that you're already used to. So this uh, pandas, we load the Nairis um, data set, we use do head um, and we query something. Imagine Dask cannot just load one CSV but can load multiple CSV that don't fit in your um, don't fit in your memory. You can still do head, you can still do uh, the queries, but you also have to call compute because it does lazy evaluation. Um, then we have also another another um, Dask collection that's called Dask back. 
that allows you to um, work with semi-structured data like JSON blobs or log files. And um, we have, uh, imagine we have tweets uh, that we want to load as a um, DAS bag. Um, and you can just call from file names, uh, in, like sterics, JSON, compress, map to a load uh, the JSON files, and then query it with like take the first two, uh, compute uh, user location frequencies, uh, and, and turn that into a, a data frame because you know the result will fit in your memory. So it feels a lot like um, what users are already used to and does the parallelism under the hood without you having to worry about that. Imagine that you're now in like the scale of uh, petabytes or things that don't fit in your disk and you actually wanna use a cluster of computers. Um, we have that distributed for that. So um, you can see uh, the only difference with, between using the desk, um, desk in the multi, multi threaded or multi processing single node uh, versus the distributed manner is that you have to import this client, um, tell the client where the, the where, where is it located, and then when you call compute, you have to pass this get um, and then the client, the, the desk client dot get. And that's gonna make the, uh, the computation in your cluster of computers. Um, the relationship with, between Dask and Blaze is can Dask can actually be a backend or an engine for Blaze. So you can use Blaze as your query language and have Dask drive those computations. So you make a Dask array uh, and then you wrap it around uh, the data, the same data, um, uh, data object that we mentioned in the, uh, in the, in the Blaze section perform the computation, get the result with compute. So right now my, my talk was mainly focused on um, users, right? You can know more about developers, uh, the, what would be if you don't wanna use those tools as a end user, but, but you actually wanna develop with them, there's uh, some good resources that I'm gonna mention. Um, on Blaze, there's a good talk on Blaze in the real world at PyData Dallas that Philip Cloud gave. Um, which goes more in the internals of how Blaze works under the hood. Uh, also, uh, Odo, so if you actually wanna know how to build your own converter, if you have one that's not already uh, built as a backend in the system, uh, how can you create one? That's also explained in Odo or uh, in both um, the Blaze Odo talk at SciPy last week uh, by Philip Cloud, and then one, another one that Ben Thalen gave at PyData Dallas. Um, there's a lot of good talks on Dask. It's a very, um, you know, six, six months old, eight months old uh, project that's spin off of Blaze. And there's also very good resources from James Christ at SciPy and uh, Matt Rocklin at uh, uh, PyData Berlin. And those talks uh, go more in depth of the implementation details of those libraries. There's many talks I have in, uh, many libraries that are in this ecosystem that I have in, um, mentioned, uh, but I, I have mentioned, but I have not gone into the details of explaining what they do. And there's already developers of those libraries that have given good talks, and then if you're interested. Um, Dine, uh, Mark Weep gave a talk at SciPy also uh, in Austin two weeks ago. Um, Stanley Cyber gave one on Numba, uh, uh, on accelerating Python with a Numba JIT compiler. Um, okay, that's the, the auto. Um, the uh, EuroPython, um, we have Antoine, uh, Oscar, and Graham, who are the number, uh, uh, one of the, they're the team of the, the number team, and they're gonna be here all week, so if you have questions relating on how to use Numba, um, they'll be happy to help you. And in B calls, uh, Francesca's dad is also here, and he gave a talk yesterday, and gonna give a tutorial tomorrow. So if you're interested in, in, in the trends of storing um, data, data, data containers, uh, memory disk, He's gonna be giving the tutorial so you can check it out. So just to summarize, um, the goals of these talks were help you rethink the term data science instead of being just uh, machine learning models, actually uh, building the connections with those five areas and how we can bring everything together moving forward. Um, also think in terms of not just one library, but inside each library we have data, we have engines and we have expressions. And encourage you to start using any of those place projects if it's something that you, you, know, you can benefit from. 
And um, this um, latest project now is possible thanks to a, a very talented team um, uh, that are working in all of these um, projects. Uh, Mark, Irwin, and Dine, um, and, and Datashape. Uh, ben has done a lot of work in Odo and Blaze. Eric also, um, and Philip Cloud, who's also a Pandas core developer, is also working in Dask. Uh, the Dask team is Matt, um, Jim, and, uh, uh, and Blake. And we also have uh, some connections with the B Colbs um, team uh, and the Bloss team uh, with Valentin and Francesc. Uh, so uh, reach out to any of them if you have interest in, in any particular library. Um, and I think I have um, five minutes for, uh, for questions, five or 10 minutes for questions, so. Yes, uh, my question is on the relationship between these projects and uh, the other projects in the scientific uh, Python community like uh, X-Ray, Pandas, or uh, do you see it as um, part of them replacing them or merging them or complementing them? Uh, I don't have a good view on the future. Okay, so um, there's a lot of work on connecting those libraries inside the other ones. We have several um, already success stories with things like Scikit Image. So Dask had a pull request in Scikit Image to speed up some of the computations that they were doing. So um, there's different layers, right? There's the, the user layer that is bringing, that is kind of extending the use case for the limitations that some of the end user facing libraries have, like Pandas and NumPy. So right now, num Pandas and NumPy cannot solve some of the, 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 the problems they're faced because of how they're built. So in that case, I would say, if you are in the size of um, terabyte, petabyte, then uh, Dask, data frame and Dask array are gonna be an alternative to Pandas and NumPy. On the other side, there's the developer layer of um, improving computations that already exist in other libraries. So there, the connection is gonna be in uh, merging, uh, in making Dask, for example, a dependency on those libraries and uh, improving the, the performance of them. Um, so does that answer your question? Uh, then there's also, there's a good uh, write in the documentation that, on the Dask do documentation that compares Dask to things in the distributed systems and whether it's an alternative or not. And I would say that is, um, they're targeting, I think, different users. Um, so I would think, I would say that some of the benefits of having a low overhead to perform distributed, um, distributed computations, it's kind of uh, the good alternative uh, for, for things that exist in that world. Uh, but, but still other people, uh, you know, it's not for, might not solve all the, all the problems but I would encourage you to, to read that comparison. So, a uh, short question. I, Dask uh, distributed looks a bit like Spark uh, um, RDDs or data frames. What is the advantage of using one of another? Why should I choose Dask uh, distributed over uh, Spark? Okay, so that question has been asked a lot. Uh, actually, um, um, Matt Walkin wrote, we extended the, the DAS documentation because we were asked so many times the, the uh, comparison between Spark and, um, and DASK. And, um, and of course, Spark is a more mature uh, project. Uh, it uses the JVM uh, and uh, and it has a, low, uh, a higher overhead of setting up, right? Dask is just a Python library. You can pip install Dask. You can uh, con install Dask. Um, and it has brings some benefits to the core Python scientific and machine lear learning uh, libraries um, that can use it. Um, and as an end user, I would say it brings much lower overhead, especially for people in the, in the Python community who don't want to mess up with setting up uh, a Spark cluster 
and, and dealing with all the, uh, with all that, you know, performance. But being said that, um, you know, you can also integrate well um, um, the Blaze, for example, Blaze um, can, can use Spark. So Spark is one of the back backends used by, um, by Blaze. So if you want to perform uh, a performance comparison, comparison between Dask and Spark for your specific use case, it's very easy to do that with Blaze because you have the same, your, your code is going to look uh, pretty much identical. You're just going to change the string that, that you pass to your data data class. But um, the same in uh, there's a very extended um, section in the DAS documentation that goes into all the details of that that comparison. Any more questions? No. So thanks. Thank you.